This is a HeadGum Original. Kick, push, kick, push. <laughs> That's right, Zay. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, everybody, the big, bad, wild boys are back. This is uh, episode three, and I'm holding off on the title so I can say it later and be dr- more dramatic. Ain't that cool with me? Ain't that cool with me, Zay? That's real cool. Yeah. Um, I'm Yasser Lester. I'm he is Isaiah Lester. And, uh, you know, we've, uh, we, we've gotten into some things, right? You know, episode one talked about nostalgia. You know, yeah, yeah, and then episode two, what we what we dig into, we talked about we talked about streetwear a little bit, yeah, yeah, how it affected you personally, yeah, that's literally what we talked about, (laughs) how you personally grew up with streetwear, (laughs) you know what I'm saying, and how it hurt you. (laughs) (laughs) Oh man, and you got in a fight with streetwear. We friends now, yeah, are are y'all? Oh no, but now we figure, you know, so close to streetwear, just culturally. We can go from the the greater thing of extreme sports, right? Right. You know, your psych, your BMXing, your uh, rollerblading, which you loved. You were a big rollerblader. I was. I was, man. I would do them crisscrosses with my legs and everything. (laughs) Roll through the hood. Yeah, crisscrosses. Oh my god, that is so funny! <laughs> just the idea of like Omar from The Wire, like rolling through the hood and just doing roller blade crisscross, <laughs> roller blade crisscross is so funny. But and actually, you know, there's a great is a great way to get into it right now. Isaiah on feet right now is wearing the uh, the Virgil Abloh off white. Nike Dunk collab. What number are those? This is Lot 5. Lot 5. He is, he's wearing a Lot 5, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, that's actually what we're going to be talking about today is uh, skateboarding and the greater global impact on culture, on clothing, on shoes. Skateboarding started like in Malibu and and it's trend you know it went from the z boys to like you know our, some of our favorite movies like um back to the future yeah back to the future also a great shoe movie yeah um yeah it, like the hoverboard uh, it goes back to tony hawk the connection between the suburbs and the urban community uh with roller skating blading as we talked about me doing my crisscrosses <laughs> And just a cultural blend. And now it's a, a game in the Summer Olympics, which is which is crazy. Yeah, it absolutely is. And we got some guests to help us break it down. Remember that from <laughs> WWE? Break it down. <laughs> we got some guests today to help us break it all down. We got Brianna King. We got Robert Neal. We got the God Dog, Steve Barra. Steve Barra. We got all that coming up for you right now on this episode of Zaya. Say it with me in a deep voice. History of Heat. That's right, y'all. Welcome to the History of Heat. Today, we're going to be digging into skateboarding and skate culture. We're going to be talking about Tony Hawk. We're going to be talking about gaming. We're going to talk about the intersection of all these things. I love the skating culture and streetwear. You know, you mentioned my dunks. I'm wearing dunks right now. I wear a lot of Palace. I wear a lot of Supreme. Um, it is it is how I rep as a skater, you know? When people look at me, they go, man, that guy must really <laughs> skate. Um, but I don't, and I didn't. That that was you, my friend. You are. Do you currently also still skateboard? You were you were dipping your toe back in a couple years ago. I was. I I, I won't even say okay. I, I I'll I'll say that I skated and I had a lot of heart, <laughs> but I don't know how much further it went. Right. I definitely like threw myself down some stairs. You I, know. I've seen you hurt yourself pretty. Yeah. Bad yeah. Oh, pretty times. bad. I, to the point where I'm. Almost positive I broke my tailbone when I was 16 and it just never got fixed. Um, so that on a scale of, you know, one to 10 of being great, 10 being great and one being not great, negative 13. It's a negative. It, I'm hurt. That's also a, a cautionary tale about the American healthcare 
system. Oh, wow. If you want to go deep. Yeah, yeah if, if you want to dive deep. deep. You, don't wanna, you know, if you really want to dig in. <laughs> you know, I got on a skateboard. I used to have a skateboard. I was about eight years old. Yeah. And I remember we had this neighbor, this downstairs neighbor. Uh, she was like an older woman. And she was always telling us not to run on the sidewalk, not to ride her bike on the sidewalk. Um, and I remember getting a skateboard. I was I was hyped on it. I was like, man, this is this is going to be cool. Right. So I didn't have any pads or anything, of course. You know, I was just right. riding very slowly on a skateboard. So I hopped on one day and I was just kind of rolling. And I was just like, you know what? Your boy's going to pick up a little bit of speed, you know, <laughs> caught some speed, pumped that leg back a couple of times, pushed my <laughs> leg back a couple of times. And I ran into a wood chip and I fell off the skateboard and I scraped up my face. Mm -hmm. uh, the older woman comes out from downstairs and she looks at me. Uh -huh. And her eyes kind of soften because, like, she sees a child hurt. Yeah. And then as she, like, stood over me, uh, her eyes hardened. And she said, this is why I said not to run her skateboard outside of, the, outside of the apartment. So instead of helping me, a small child, she just wanted to <laughs> reinforce her point. So needless to say, I never got on a skateboard again, Yasser. Okay. Um, but... What is your draw to it? Like, what keeps you on on the board? You know what? Yeah. Thank you so much. Thanks for asking what keeps me on the wood. <laughs> um, that means a lot. <laughs> I'll say this, man. So, you know, you, you tried it earlier than me. I tried it in high school. This is the God's honest truth. The first season of Jackass that came out. They did a whole, uh, I want to say it was like a, it wasn't, I don't even know if it was a Christmas episode, but it was like Bam Margera, Tony Hawk, like all these people dressed as Santa and skateboarding. And I was like, that is, that looks like the most fun thing I've ever seen in my life. And I'm not like, as you know, like um, when I play basketball, my arms become noodles. Um, when I play football, my uh, courage becomes noodles. Um, <laughs> I kind of lose all of it when I play baseball. My hands, as you can guess. Noodles. Noodles. Yes. You know that thing where you like, you actually do make contact with the baseball, but then the insides of your hands hurt from where you were holding yeah. the bat. And you're like, ah, I can't handle that. Yeah. You yeah. It's a, it takes some getting used to. Yeah. So not a lover of those things. And I was like, maybe I can try skateboarding. It was the most fun I've had, it felt like the most like, and I still love basketball. Me and you still play all the yes. time. It's just that again, when I show up, noodle, <laughs> noodle boy is all, noodle boy is on the court, you know. So skateboarding always just felt like I don't know. It feels it felt like the intersection, and I I think this is like a, a good way to kind of talk about all this stuff. It felt like the intersection of all the things I liked. Right? You have. All the graphics on the 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 decks themselves, and you know, as we know, I'm a art boy, illustrator, all that stuff. Um, it was punk rock music. It was also rap music. Yep. It was like it it was weird fashion. You know, it was like overtly baggy, but also like you know, because I skateboarded, it was like that's what got me wearing skinny jeans when like no one was wearing them. You know what I mean? Sure. Besides skateboarders, and then the actual activity itself, like. It's so hard to do each thing that when you actually do it, it felt like such a bigger payoff, if that makes sense. You know what I yeah. mean? Like, um, so yeah, man. And, and every few years, I'm like, now's the time. You know what? 37 years old. Time to get back on the board. Time to get back on the board. And I actually think I could land a 15 steer. <laughs> I could land a 15 steer kickflip. Oh, now's man. the time. You know, um, I will say so during pandemic, it, it still is. I don't know why I'm always like, it's over. Yeah, it's, it's not, not over. Yeah, it's not over. <laughs> I started skating again, bought myself a little, got myself a little bored, um, practicing kickflips in the driveway. And then I was like, huh, I'm back. That only took me 25 minutes to land <laughs> as my neighbors have to hear the clacking and popping of a board going nonstop. And they're probably like, wow, there's a hardworking 11 year old boy next door. <laughs> and then they look and they're like, nope, it's a balding, gray haired man. 
but I say all that to say that like now it's everywhere, right? Like the fashion of skate culture and, you know, Tony Hawk and e-gaming, the blending and inclusivity between urban community and skating community, you know, it's just like, uh, it's just so big, right? Yeah, absolutely. And I knew it, it started to become like real, real different when Supreme did that LV collab. I feel like that changed the game for a lot of yeah. companies. Yeah. Um, and to see uh, what is a essentially a skatewear, skateboarding, streetwear company uh, make it into the mainstream like that. So there are still Louis Vuitton prices now. <laughs> I want to point that out. Yeah, yeah. But the idea of those two things coming together, I was just like, oh, this, it felt to me culturally different. Like right. this is, this is skateboarding really stepping into the mainstream in a way that it hasn't before. And there are other, you're like, you said there are other opportunities to to say that it's kind of spilled over like the Tony Hawk games and again, like Jackass and stuff like that. But it was still very much in its own lane when it came to that kind of stuff. For sure. You know, when you see, uh, you know, like I saw, I was in Soho and I saw uh, a woman who looked like Diane Keaton wearing uh a Supreme Louis Vuitton box logo. And I was like, oh my God, huh. this is interesting. With their little bow tie and her top hat. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Massive brown overcoat, <laughs> Supreme Louis Vuitton. Huh. Um, and it kind of all started with DC and Etnies. Yeah. And there was other brands. Yeah, so you used to wear a ton oh, of skate stuff. Buddy, let me tell you something. Foundation, Toy Machine, America. I was a big audio head too. It's yeah. just spelled A D I O. Uh Kareem Campbell's like axioms, I believe they're called. Like, I mean, like all that I was like into every single version. And of course, the kings, in my opinion, like granted they came from Toy Machine, but I still wear zero. Like I still buy yeah, a you zero. Love zero. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Jamie Thomas was like the wrecker of the century, you know? And then you had the other dudes like, you know, your Day One songs and your Clyde Singletons and like all these dudes that were just like, I loved like a Rodney Mullen, a very tech heavy, but then like, again, like Jamie Thomas, someone who would just be like, boom, yeah. just like literally launch themselves off a building, you know? I, I think the thing that's interesting about skating is that like you can always, it never betrays itself in a weird way. Like, you can always go right back to, like, the Z-Boys. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can always make it kind of back. Not even kind of. You always make it back to, like, surf culture and Southern California and roller skating. And, like, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, all that stuff. Like, it never feels like, even though New York and L.A. skating feel so vastly different, mm -hmm. that you feel that through line. You know, it's not like a, you know, it's not like a rap. Where it's like it feels like this thing emerged here and then this thing emerged here, you know, like yeah. it West Coast rap and East Coast rap feel like two different things, right? Yes. But like skating always feels like it makes its way back to Southern California, you know, granted it's a weather thing and all that stuff, but still, um, even like the SB dunks, right? Like the P rods, right? Like, right. even though still felt niche. Because, like, he had to, you know, make his, like, cements and all these things. Like, he had to incorporate the elements that make the big Nikes and the big Jordan sell yes. into his his skate shoe. But, like, it was also the first time that, like, because I remember for a long time uh, when I was coming up, they would be like, keep Nike out of skateboarding. Like, those corporate drones, blah, blah, blah. And P-Rod was like, but what about these? And you're like, okay, those those look like Jordans. I want those. I, I think that was like, and of course I'm a big SB dunk fan. I actually saw this really funny uh, tweet where somebody posted a bunch of dunks that were torn up and somebody said, the person retweeted and said like, I would never do this to my dunks. And the person respond, uh, there, uh, there was a person who responded. Do you know what the SB and SB dunk stands <laughs> for? You're supposed to tear yeah. them up. Um, so, I think P Rod would, those were the first real, like, there are, you know, every, every skater, especially like in the early to mid 2000s, had their own shoe with some company. But I think that marriage for me really, it really stood out when P Rod started doing it. Right. Because, like you said, the colorways he would do were unique. They were carved out. It did feel like, 
different thing than just getting a pair of a pair of Jordans. You know right. what I mean? It definitely made it its own thing. Yeah. And then you put them on and I was like, oh, these don't fit the same as basketball shoes. Like you have to learn <laughs> the whole new model of shoe that you had to learn. Yeah. But yeah, he did some like those what the Pauls, man, those are like they're grail. They're, they're grail. So they're hard. so they're so dope. Yeah. Here's the other thing about skate shoes. You can go look at them now and they're still like 70 bucks. Yeah. You know. Absolutely. Like traditional skateboarding company shoes. But uh, again, we're kind of talking about the intersection of all this stuff, right? Which I think is so interesting, especially with rap, right? You know, like you kind of start with like, you know, like your beastie boys. But then you like get into this whole new... I don't want to say genre, but kind of like subsidiary, right? Like your Lupe's and like Pharrell, like yeah. it truly ch- skateboarding truly changed the course of rap, yeah, because of people like that. And I mean, I would put Lil Uzi Vert in that category oh, as absolutely. well. Yeah, um, Lil Wayne, I can't <laughs> gauge. <laughs> I don't know what he's up to. I know that he skates skateboards. <laughs> I can't gauge him. But the rest oh of them, my God. the rest of them, yeah. I like Lupe Fiasco came along in a very pivotal time of me, of my, um, of me growing up and becoming a sensitive, a young sensitive <laughs> black man. Um, like he was like, I was like, oh, this is this looks like, like I was in film school and I was like, he looks like a dude that would call would call the theater the cinema, you know, <laughs> and I vibe with that. I vibe with that heavy. Yeah. Um, I mean, have you watched his, like, samurai videos? No. Oh, uh, just go on his Instagram. He, like, fully is, like, a samurai now. So he, like, walks around with, like, a katana blade and, like, I don't oh, know the God. proper name. I don't think road. anybody should be walking around with no a blade. No one should be walking. I, I, here's the thing. This is where I say, like, racism should exist a little bit. <laughs> like, w- black people shouldn't be walking around <laughs> dressed like samurais. I'll just, like, Afro samurai work as a cartoon, but then you see it in real life and you're like, <laughs> oh, this ain't for us. <laughs> uh, I don't think this is for us. <laughs> no, but no, back to your point about Pharrell. Uh, yeah, he, if I can remember right, like growing up, I know the Beastie Boys, like you said, did this as well. Right. But like Pharrell in the mid 2000s, putting skateboarders in his videos. Right. And having that whole setup. Yeah. And it, it was, yeah, it was a little, it was just different. It wasn't where the Beastie Boys was this, you know, really innovative blend of rock music and rap in terms of like their beats and the structure of the songs the fact the fact that they shouted their lyrics right pharrell made it a little bit more cool right you know a little bit not cool but like a little bit more chill right yeah. you know what i mean yeah you can wear an iced out bracelet and and also skateboard right um and that's another thing i love about the just the culture of it all at least from the exterior it looks pretty inclusive in the sense that anyone, if you want to learn how to skateboard, you can pick up a skateboard and do it. Right. It's not like it's not like playing basketball where you have to go to a bunch of camps. It's not like playing football. It's not like playing baseball. It's this it's his own thing. And it's in a weird way. It's like a bizarro go- golf. You know, it's just like kind of like like you said, it was so it's so technical and it's so satisfying. Yeah. When you get something right. Um. That that's what the first thing that popped in my head was golf right but it's the culturally it's just the total opposite of it which i think is kind of cool yeah truly all you need is a skateboard yeah but again it's like yeah you don't need to know how to skate to to dig into the culture right like and again it's so fashion forward like if you watch and i've been saying this for years watch skateboarding like uh uh, wardrobe trends and the videos and that is what people will be wearing for the next like three fashion kind of seasons though we we operate in quicker fashion seasons now but like all this baggy stuff coming back like skateboarders started doing that like a year and a half ago yeah when all the skinny stuff was in in fashion it was skateboarders trucker hats like you know what i mean like all that stuff comes from skateboarding um but uh but yeah i I just think to like kind of wrap it up if you will that we've as it's weird because it's become so superfluous we don't even think about it anymore right like it's just kind of like oh yeah this is an off-white thing and i like it because it's off-white or i like the look of it blah 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 but it's like a bad one but virgil is a skateboarder you know what I mean? Yeah, like, like the skateboard. Yeah, so it's like all of it kind of 
comes back to you know your your loves of like your Tony Hawks and your Kareem Campbells and your Chad Muskas and your Steve Barras. <laughs> All right, y'all, we'll be right back with our guest, Steve Bear, Brianna King, and Robert Neal. And a little bit later, our best friend, senior economist at StockX, Jesse Einhorn. <laughs> Whoo! Isaiah, Jesse, we have truly the biggest boss dog of all the little puppies on the porch. A lot of puppies on that. Porch. A lot of puppies on the porch. One big dog. There's one big one dog. One big dog with his woof woof, <laughs> keeping them in check. You guys, I, I truly, this man has become a friend of mine over the past like year and a half, which is like crazy to me because, as Isaiah can attest to, I literally grew up like idolizing him. And I will say this: they say don't meet your heroes, and we still technically haven't met in real life. But I'm so glad we've met via phone calls and Zooms and everything in between. He is uh, a legend, innovator, anything, any other word you can uh, uh, use to describe someone who's of his magnitude and caliber in the world of skateboarding, culture as a whole, co-founder of The Barracks. And we're going to get into everything that he's done. Ladies and gentlemen, Steve Barra. Steve Barra. Steve the Bear. Uh. <laughs> Oh, man. How do I follow up with that? <laughs> what if you just started crying your eyes out? <laughs> <laughs> so touched. Um, what's up, Stevie? What's up? How's it going? I'm so Good, glad man. to be here. And I broke my podcast rule, too. You know, I've never done a podcast. But Whoa, when you call and ask for a podcast, I hey. had to say yes. Hey, you know what? When Zaya and Yasser are on the line and they say, you do the podcast, right. no matter who you are, you do the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Look, we know uh, reputations decide you do the podcast, <laughs> baby. <laughs> um, first of all, just how are you? <laughs> I'm good. I'm in yeah. Jacksonville, Florida right now for a skate contest that um, I'm watching that I'm yeah. not in. And I'm good. You know, I'm, yeah. I'm like... I'm really happy to see you here because I know we I've probably flaked on three different times that we should have met in real life. Hey, man. But you know that I'm the biggest fan, so uh, Look, it couldn't have been a better time okay, to be here. Okay, you've earned the Venmo I sent you, all right? <laughs> now I know. <laughs> so thanks for doing it. Um, but uh, truly, truly, you know, as, as everything I said, huge fan. But I do want to like let, let's just let's just wrap for a little bit, sure. and then I'll let yeah, you. Yeah, let's you know, I'll let you get back to uh, doing kick flips on a on a little kicker ramp. You know, yeah. <laughs> uh, um, and that's coming from someone who truly has never gotten past uh, what you would call uh, being very bad at skateboarding. I never got. Uh, past I don't know. That I've level. seen that kickflip, but buddy, there is. I'll say this: like being a thirty-seven-year-old man and being like, "I'm gonna start doing kickflips again." I, I'm trying to. It's is that sadder or being an adult who does like just full dancing TikToks? Like, which one is sadder? <laughs> The TikToks, uh, the TikToks. <laughs> for sure. TikToks for sure. <laughs> All right, cool. Stevie, Stevie Bear, yes. the big bambino. Um, first of all, yes. I don't know. I, I just gotta say this, like, um, truly, and I'm sure he's probably done talking about it at this point. But Steve has one of the most iconic um, um, skate parts in history, and Birdhouse is the end. Um, he gets like decapitated at the end. It's just, but also it's just, he's just a thrasher through and through. He's truly like, you're one of the people that I always like, oh, that's what bravery looks like. <laughs> like that's what someone means. Like you can, you can be brave and skate. But now like, I, again, I'm an old man and it's going to ask you. As am I. Okay, cool. Then let's, let's wrap as old yeah. men. Like how, yeah. how different was skating, skateboarding perceived in your youth versus like now in this generation? Like to me, it feels uh, night and day, but do you, do you see the correlation? Did you watch it happen so much in real time that you're kind of like, oh, it makes sense. Or are you like still like my mind is blown that people are okay with it? Oh, it's, you're totally right. It is night and day. And you know, it, even over time, you know how they say like the, what is it? The best way to cook a frog is you put them in a 
pot of water and then boil it slowly. And you'd think, oh, you yeah. get used to it. But I'm still so scarred by when I was a teenager skating that the, <laughs> I'll never get used to the fact that these guys are, that skaters are cool, you know? Because we were not cool. I was in ninth grade right. walking down the hall and the jocks were like, skaters suck, you know? And I'd shudder. You know, and fucking walk down the other stairwell. <laughs> you know, true story. I was at a mall one time. I was. I used to hang out at this skate shop every day, which is funny. You know that show, Mr. Robot? Yeah. Yeah. You ever heard that show? So the, the producer of Mr. Robot, uh, I grew up with in St. Louis. Okay. Right? And we used to hang out at this this uh, skate shop every day when we were like eighth and ninth grade, right? And they were like, hey, go to the mall. We heard that they're selling skateboards. Go to the mall and see how, you know, what the price is. I was like, okay, yeah, I'll go do that. You know, fucking trek across the freeway, get to the mall. I'm looking for the fucking sports store in there that may have skateboards that were and it turns out that they never even had skateboards, but I'm walking there. I'm right, walking right <laughs> by KB. <laughs> I'm walking right by KB um, toy store, right? Remember that? And I see yeah. the oh, guy yeah. and his friends walking up the stairs, the, jo- the wrestling jock from school that always screams across the hall, skaters suck. Like from the way other end of the hall, you know? And then I <laughs> yeah. run. And I'm like, oh, fuck. What am I going to do? So I just keep walking. And as I'm walking, I get 10, 15 feet, and then, bap, right in the back of the head. <gasps> he fucking blasts me in the back of the head. I have a huge lump in the back of my head. I remain composed, and I just walk into B. Dalton Bookstore. You know B. Dalton Bookstore? <laughs> remember that? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I pick up a magazine. I don't even remember what it was. I just pick up a magazine, and I start looking at it as if I just, like, I never even saw him. He just, like, hit me in the back of the head and was just laughing and sauntered off, right? And I'm looking at this magazine, and I'm just silently crying because it fucking hurts so <laughs> bad. So I'm so oh. scarred by stuff like that. I mean, I have a yeah. million of those stories, right? So I moved from St. Louis, Missouri to Nebraska, okay. right? And I was like one of the best soccer players in the state, played for the state team, played for the best soccer club, right? Would score six goals a game. Like I was good at soccer. And the kid who was like the best soccer player, you know, before I got there, who was yeah. sort of like my friend, but also my arch nemesis in a way, because like, oh, you're good too, kind of thing. Yeah. Great soccer player. Anyway, he started skating and I wanted to skate. Funny story is, I don't think about this guy. I continue to keep skating. Uh, Five years later, I turned pro. I was living at Tony Hawk's house. I was a pro skater, right? I was 18. Totally lost track of where he went. So I look him up, and this motherfucker became the third highest scoring player of the Major League Soccer history. Became the youngest coach for for soccer. Yeah. Dude, so when I tell people I was going to be a pro soccer player, I was fucking right, dude. I was going to be a pro soccer player. <laughs> you know what's crazy is I tried, like, sending him a message on Instagram, and he didn't send me a message back. <laughs> me and Yasser, yeah. me and Yasser went to high school with a Peloton instructor. Yeah. And I was like, oh, yeah? I was like, this dude, this dude is now famous. And yeah. so I sent him a message on Instagram, like, yo, what's uh-huh. going on? Long time no see. Never even looked at it. Never wrote me back. <laughs> can I say, yeah. can I you guys but you guys are sending him and it's probably going into that message request folder and he's not looking. <laughs> Like, you yeah. have to it's comment on his thing. You, you guys have to comment. That's the way to get their attention. I, I feel like commenting is No, you're right. It's thirsty. It's thirsty. Both it's, of you guys are way too thirsty. <laughs> 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 hey, remember me? <laughs> the whole reason I started skating. I mean, that is kind of crazy. Like, I mean, like, it yeah. is interesting because I'll bet weirdly he thinks the same about you, right? Like, I bet, especially because I'll say this, like, uh, for those of you that... Anytime you're seeing a skateboarding clip online on Instagram, it is from Steve's Instagram account. Like the like the yeah. barracks, Steve's company runs culture. So it's like so interesting to hear you talk about like, oh, like it wasn't anything and blah, blah, blah. And it's like you are at the forefront of what like not just skate culture, but culture as a whole, because I've said this on this episode, but like 
skate culture dictates culture now in a lot of weird ways. Yeah. It dictates fashion. Yeah. It yep. dictates music. It's all these things. And it's like, you are the guy, like, you are the gatekeeper you talk about a little bit. How does that <laughs> feel? How about that? Like, how does Steve, like, do you, do you, how about this? Do you feel like you are ever under pressure or under the the microscope of a like because i'll also say this steve you the barracks in particular showcases female and female identifying skaters at a yeah. rate like uh, three thousand percent higher than than yeah. your your next leading like skateboard quote unquote like uh, uh competition or, or uh, a viewership number so like i would say this like in doing things like that, are you just like, yo, this is cool to me. I think these girls are rad or whatever. Or are you like, I, I, because I know my place in skate culture and culture as a whole right now, I need to be the arbiter of these things and pushing these things out there. Like, or is it a mix of both? It is a little mix of both. I, I, I'll tell you, cause it, 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 it starts from like why we, I started the barracks, why, I got I got Eric involved and in why we both then went forward in starting the barracks in the first place is you know I come from the Midwest and never had money you know I knew what it was like to be very poor right and um my my mother uh grew up as poor as you could possibly be in yeah. in a in a terrible terrible childhood right and so we never um you know, it was a little bit better than hers, but we, we were poor. And so I knew the plight of a poor person and wanting to always have opportunities, you know, and I was, I was thirsty for those opportunities being in the Midwest. And, you know, I was always the guy who, when pros came into town, cause I was good at skating, they sort of would, they'd be on tour and they'd come to our skate park and say, Oh, you guys could stay at my house. Not knowing that my house was like, a fucking dump, right? right? Yeah, that yeah. just was my house, yeah. right? And and that it was very as big as this hotel room, right? With no shower, right? <laughs> right? Just the bathtub. Yeah. Sometimes not even hot water, you know. But so yeah. I, when I started to become way more aware of that and wanting to, and and really always, you know, fighting my way into because I was good at skating into being successful at it and always having like the best sponsors and selling a lot of product and kind of transitioning over into that different kind of way of living. I, I saw a lot of people in my time not make it, right? Who were better at skateboarding than I was, right? But for some reason, I had just possessed some kind of talent to keep myself going, and it's not like I was bad at skateboarding, but, you know, but I, there were guys who were like, man, I wish I could skate like him, you know? And then, you know, skateboarding has this somewhat kind of boys club that exists, right? Through uh, the people that own the brands. And I was never one who wanted to own a brand. I didn't want to own a brand. I didn't want to make skateboards. My whole trajectory was like, I was going to go and make movies when I'm done with skateboarding as a yeah. as an athlete. And that was it. And it'll be like a chapter of my life that I'll look back on really fondly. And so what happened was I, I, I would thought I was at that spot. I was, um, had developed a reputation around town as a writer. I was getting job offers from movie studios to write yeah. movies. I had this movie that I wanted to make. And so this producer at Warner Brothers who wanted me to do this movie had said to me, I met everybody on the lot. No one can give you a job. Why? And I said, well, I'm a pro skater and... I want to do this other movie. So long story short, I directed a movie. It went to Sundance. I didn't have a good experience at Sundance. And yeah. Steve Golan from Anonymous Content, who were my managers, yeah. and who's since passed away, but um, he came to me and he said, hey, we're looking to get in the online space. Do you have any ideas? And I said, yeah, I have an idea. So Anonymous Content funded our business for the first three years. Whoa. And I... Whoa. So what happened was I was on tour, and this is all to answer. I know it's a long kind of way no, to answer no, this great. Yeah. this year. Yeah. But but it really has to do with why I do the certain things that I do. Is so I was on tour. Um, it was my first tour back from you know spending a year and a half making movies, spending five months living in Canada, shooting it, then editing it, then the Sundance experience, then going oh well I have all these commitments still left. I had a pro shoe out still. 
have to go on tour. So I'm on tour and it's like Keith Huffnagel, myself, who, you know, has subsequently uh, started a really popular brand called Huff, Huff you right. know. Um, Day One Song, who's ostensibly probably one of the greatest skaters that ever oh, lived. Car- Carrie Getz, myself. Jesus. And then Jeremy Rogers, who was kind of brand new at the time, you know? Yeah. He had just kind of got like fear God tattooed on his neck. Yeah. He had tattoos on his hand, you know, yeah. a music note on his face. And, you know, he he was a young kid who would I I had helped bring up, got him sponsored by uh girl and DVS. And it wasn't a lot of kids, but it was enough to notice. The demo that we were at, it was in Long Island. And there were a bunch of, it got rained out. And there were a bunch of kids standing in line to do like the poster signing, right? Yeah. So they come in, come into the shop. We sign the poster. So there were these kids that would skip Carrie, Huff, Daywan, myself. And, and this kid came up to Jeremy. He goes, I love your tattoos. And I realized there was a media problem. You know, I would go on movie websites every day and look at information, you know, because I'm just a movie nerd. Yeah, yeah. And I like, this doesn't exist in skating. So then I started developing the idea of building something online based around just the fact that Eric and I had this private skate facility that like on any given Saturday when it's raining, if a bomb went off, skateboarding would be dead because right. it was all the best guys skating in there. Yeah. and. Yeah. And so that's kind of, I mean, there's a lot more to it, but I had seen in my career guys who wanted to ride for companies that I rode for, who I backed, who maybe a couple of other guys on the team backed, but because it wasn't a unanimous decision, they didn't get on and they should have had pro careers and never did. And so I wanted to kind of break up that boys club a little bit yeah. and pu- and create a platform where I could promote anyone and everyone that I thought, because skateboarding is a culture. And, and, and if you look at it, prior to that, it was the magazines, right? Yeah. And the only way that the magazines would give you some kind of leg up or hand up is if you rode for a company that advertised with them. Mm-hmm, right. And I wanted, to, I wanted to do away with that. I wanted yeah. to say, no, this is... This is us. This is who we think are, are rad. You know, some of them ride yeah. for advertisers that, that work with us. And a lot of them don't, you know, yeah. because I wanted to give that thing that I felt like I was given by uh, some very key people in my life growing up as a poor kid in the Midwest. Yeah. Right. Like, you know, given skateboards, given shoes, given wheels and trucks and stuff like that, because I couldn't afford any of that stuff. Right. Clothes, everything, yeah. you know. Living with Tony Hawk when I was 18 came to California with $40. Yeah. Right? Because it's all I had. Yeah. So I really, and then same, and and, and with the girls, same thing. Like I saw that girls were skating uh, really early on. I mean, we've been doing a girls event since the first year this barracks started. Yeah. So almost 14 years, yeah. you know? And then over time, it's it, it's exponentially increased to yeah. where, you know, I truly think in the next year or two, skating, at least the industry and the commerce of it, 40% will be girls, yeah. you know? And so you have to, as a, as a, as a, I guess a business guy, you have to pay attention to that. But really, that's way less important to me than it is the the ability to give people an opportunity knowing that I can do that and people did that for me, if yeah. that makes sense. That, no, dude, if I don't sound too fucking righteous. No, no, no that's great. That's, that's absolutely right. Yeah. The big question is that, you know, and you, you touched on it and I was going to get to it anyway, but you are also a very successful actor, filmmaker, all that stuff. Do you think we are about to, because skating by nature is something that you have to film in order to, to, you know, get it seen, right? Like, are we right. about to hit, uh, we'll say, a peak again? Like, I don't know if you remember, like, late 90s, early 2000s, where they were, like, making, like, there was a TV show called Skate. And, like, you know, just, like, they were really trying to, like, yeah. pimp the culture a little bit. Do you think we're going to get back to that point? Because, again, it is so prevalent. You, as a filmmaker, are you in this space again of, like, maybe there's another story I want to tell that involves this stuff. Like wh- where, where are you, where do you see the future of skateboarding in like the film and TV space? Yeah, I think short answer is yes. I think we are at an apex where that stuff is going to start happening. And I think we're, we're 
in that point where people are very interested in it and very interested in the culture because it's, you know, uh, fa- fashion is sort of subsequently obsessed with um, skateboarding and kind of always has been, but now right. it's like really reached the right eyeballs because I think skateboarding now has existed long enough to where, you know, it's not a bunch of old people who never had skateboarding yeah. in their life before, right. you know. Now it's people who are my age like, oh, yeah, we grew up with skateboarding. Mm -hmm. I I can see that as a viable thing, you know, if now and the big if is always, you know, if you look at everything in the past, uh, I think we've been building up to this thing to have something really legitimate uh, about skating. Right. Right. Whereas before all of those initiatives were kind of led by people like for instance the i remember the record labels would always kind of come into the skate culture and be like all right here you go guys here's fucking you know some some 41 you know this is skate music <laughs> <laughs> right and it's like i don't know a single skater that ever listened to some 41 you know and <laughs> So it was – that was the big chasm between those guys and the actual culture. And I think now yeah, right. there's people at least in positions that understand the culture a lot more and understand skating a lot more. And they're smart enough – and look, it's it's very fortunate. There's – uh, you know, we're in a crazy time, right? We're, we're it, There's a lot of change happening. But I think what's – a uh, 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 one really good thing about all the stuff that's happening is that you know with the proliferation of like making sure that a lot of people are represented like there's female directors there's female writers there's lgbtq all of all of that right too right. but that goes to you know selfishly that also goes to our culture right? right because everybody wants to make sure that it's authentic well great so for the first time ever someone can actually do a deal with uh, uh, anyone in the skate industry that's and authentically get uh, a direction that isn't going to embarrass us when we see it up on TV, right? right? Or right. in film, you know? Yeah. So that's what I think is really great about what's happening now is that like it can be, we are going to see that. We are going to, and hopefully if I can do my job correctly, you know, and I can't speak for anyone else who's developing something, but I think that I will have, and look, it's something that I never wanted to do. I was talking to them about a totally different project. Right. And I don't even write stuff. Like I was, I don't write like about skateboarding, yeah. but I live it. So that was why I never wanted to do anything about it. Cause I didn't, I didn't also didn't want to be the guy like, Oh, you're the guy that's like, uh, be the skateboard guy, even though you write about like cops and the law, which is basically what I write about, yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, um, you know, you're the skateboard guy. And I didn't want to be known as that. But I think now at this point in time where the culture is caught up to the mainstream in a way, it's yeah. okay. I don't know for me to do that if that yeah. if that answer works for you. It does. Dude, <laughs> seriously, thank you for thank you so much, man. This is dope. Afternoon with us, of course. Yeah, truly, like I, we're so thankful to you. And like, though Isaiah never skated proper, like he can attest to like coming with me to like gas stations and watching all these skate videos with me and like and filming them. I did yeah, all of that. Like, so, which is like, a story of my my creative yeah. origin stories was going to, with Yasser and his friends and filming them skate yeah like that was the oh, first man. those are the first things i ever yeah. shot and now he's a writer director so it's like uh i so, love that so well look I mean, let me tell you let me tell you something though you see, yeah okay because it for me as a skater who's committed his whole life to skating and to see someone like you um you know make s- such rad stuff such funny stuff like Black Monday, you know, I'm a huge fan of, and just yeah, you, yeah. Be, you know, becoming an actor and a writer and a producer. And I don't know if you direct anything, uh, but no, I'm that, sure you that's will. Isaiah. <laughs> no, okay, that's Isaiah. Okay, okay, Isaiah. Yeah. <laughs> but like, I can't tell you just how important it is to me and the skate culture that there are people outside of the skate culture doing stuff. That's important and cool and high quality, like what you're doing, because it to me it says that one that you can still love skating even if you're not a pro skater or even if you don't work in the industry, and yeah. then also I get to say, well, look, skaters are some of the most creative people on on the earth. Look at you, Sierra, yeah. right? Yep, yeah. 
So I'm really thankful for that. So I, I and, and I'm really thankful that you even acknowledge skateboarding is a part of your life because that's really big. Like I, I one time I had a, a conversation with Justin Bieber, right? <laughs> he was at the bear. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> just, just at, at he was at the barracks skating, yeah, 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 right? Of he skates, and I was like, "Dude, do you realize like how what you did for skating, skating by putting skateboarding in your music video?" And he was dumbfounded. He didn't realize that that could actually be good for skating. I'm right. like, every girl in the world yeah, yeah. now thinks skating is fucking cool, right. you know? Yeah. But the thing is, the same goes with like what you're doing. Like, it's the same fucking thing, yeah. right? You guys are part of our culture, but you're also part of a whole other culture that you're succeeding in. And like, I'm really proud of that yeah. as like a, a guy who like, you know, really solely mostly lives in skating, yeah. you know? All right. So I just want to pay you that compliment. All right, man, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man, dude, get a life. Uh, uh, <laughs> Uh, dude, for real, thanks all right, for later, guys. yeah. All right, man. Uh, no, for real, thanks for spending your time with us, man. We we love you dearly, and uh, we'll we'll hit you up soon. Thanks. Man. Welcome to StockX, the only live marketplace for what's now and next. From the most historic heat to the latest instant classics, StockX specializes in giving everyone access to what they want and love. With StockX, you have the power to shop millions of hard-to-find or sold-out products at their true market value. And thanks to StockX's live marketplace, you have the ability to instantly shop the latest and greatest. Download the app or sign up online to start buying and selling in a few easy clicks. That's right. You can use the code HISTORYHEAT for free shipping on your first purchase of any order of $240 or more. Start shopping at StockX.com. Access the now. You know, we're talking about skateboarding today. We out here. We got two very, very, very special guests. I, I, I let Jesse stay around as well. Uh, Jesse really, I mean, he just gets lonely. So he's staying for the segment. Uh, but we have two pretty, pretty great uh, skaters here. A king and queen of skateboarding. Thank uh, you, thank you. Put your hands together for Brianna King and Robert Neal. That's right. A literal king. A literal king. So to, this is an episode we're talking about pretty much skateboarding and its influence on streetwear, uh, sneakers, and just uh, just fashion as a whole. It's like really taken over. Uh, mm-hmm. But it hasn't, it hasn't been a recent thing. It's always kind of been like that. So... I think my first question for y'all, how did streetwear and fashion influence the skateboarding side for you? Was it a part of it? Were you Did you get into it partly because you're like, yo, not only is skating dope, but I think they're dressed dope as well. Um, so, Brianna, I'll start with you. Well, I grew up in L.A., so skateboarding has always been a huge thing, and I've always been around skateboarders, and I grew up next to a skate shop, so that was always convenient for me. Even though I wasn't skateboarding, I just, like, pulled up for the swag at the skate shop. I'm like, this looks like this looks better than everything else around us, so wow. here I go. And it was That's just fire. That's how I kind of am, too. Uh, I'm not. I'm not a skater. Uh, Yasser is a big time skateboarder, but I, I'm there for the fashions of it all. Um, you don't want to see me on a skateboard. It's not, it's not pretty. Uh, what about you, Robert? What about you? Uh, Sam, I grew up in Long Beach, California. So like, I feel like fashion and skateboarding, I feel like it goes hand in hand. Like, yeah. you know, everybody's influenced by skateboarding nowadays. Like the fashion culture is influenced by skateboarding, same and vice versa. Like it goes hand in hand. It's been like that forever, though. When you say skateboarding is like, I feel like it might be the most fashionable sport, like without oh, yeah. without question, almost, yeah. right? Period. Like, is there any? You guys feel that way? Like, as skaters, like, are you just like, is it? Is there any competition out there? Like, is it just me or is skateboarding just like the most fashionable sport? I mean, you see that everyone is like, mm-hmm. so many sports. Let's say they're all sponsored by Nike, and we mm-hmm. all get like sent similar clothes. Yeah. Like, you don't only get sent like SB stuff; you get everything, and. Who rocks it best? The skaters. <laughs> the skaters <laughs> rock it best. Skaters know how to wear clothes. It is simply like, it is just the coolest. Because it's like, 
it, it's different. It's just like maybe in like the fifties, you show up with a dope tennis outfit, and people will be like, "Oh, you got the blazing new fit. You got <laughs> yeah, you, you got the, the tartan pants <laughs> and <laughs> and the and sweater." It's but like shorts. the way we carry ourselves, like our body is the drip. And then we just like yeah. have the same clothes on. The honestly. clothes on, yeah. Yo, and like it's skating is such a self-expressive sport. Like yeah. I kind of feel like it kind of starts with the outfit and then you see this person <laughs> express themselves on a board in a way yeah. that you can't see you can't see everybody do. Like I told this story earlier in the podcast, but I, I was once a skateboarder myself, right? I got a skateboard as a gift. I was eight years old and I uh I hit a wood chip and I flew off of it. And I hit my face, and I never got on a skateboard again. I was terrified, um, wow. uh, but I, I stick. I stuck with the clothing. Like that part of it, mm. I liked. Uh, I just don't have the coordination or the pain threshold to actually skateboard. So my next question, I guess, is what keeps y'all motivated and keeps y'all going? What? Where did this love of the sport come from? Uh, Robert, I'll start with you this time. Uh, I said a love for the sport of skateboarding came from obviously my friends. Like they motivate me all the time because they're always doing something crazy and it hypes me up. It just keeps standing on the board. It's fun landing tricks. Yeah, I mean it's. I mean, like I said, it just looks like it, it looks like the coolest thing that I'll never be able to do. It's a bummer for me. Nah, you'll be able to do it if you try. Yeah, if you yeah, actually that's tried. Great. You would. You would. Okay, maybe I will. Maybe I'll do it. Maybe I'll try. Got to get over that wood chipper feel. Yeah, I do. I know it's it's a, it's like I've brought it up three too. times already. It's really this a wood chip spot. has haunted my life. He's been tying my like, life for like PTSD. weeks. Now. <laughs> the man is the man is traumatized. Yeah, I need to take it to my therapist. Um, yeah. I don't yeah, see to work her. Till, I don't see her till next week, so I have to put that in my notes. Uh, Brianna, what about you? What uh, what drives you? What got you into the game? Um, what what did it for you? I always like doing things that are very difficult. Like I started everything that I do, I've, I've started on my own. I've always been a loner till recently, but I've, I've played music. I ran cross country. I'm like, I just want to do things that are super duper difficult and see what happens see what next. Happens. So like skateboarding has been one of the most difficult things that I've ever done. So every day I'm like, damn, like I'm still not that fire. Like this is sick. I'm just gonna keep going because I like it when it's really hard. Yeah. So that's just like what keeps me going is just difficulty. <laughs> yeah. So is it like a you versus Challenge. yourself kind of feeling? A hundred percent. Yeah. Like when I'm like when I go to sleep at night, I'm just thinking of a trick in my head. I'm not on my phone like, oh, my friend's fire. I want to be fire. Like I'm not on there. I'm just in my yeah. head like, yo, 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 I gotta do this trick, 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 trick. Wake up. I'm like, yes, <laughs> ready to go skate. Do you all feel like again? I skated a little bit like growing up, but it was like I don't have any like you know life defining story like Isaiah here about you know pain and and loss and, and trauma. <laughs> but but it's I trauma. did I skate I skate a little bit. I wasn't very good. I kind of gave it up. But I did like wearing sort of skate clothes. And I'm sure you've seen a lot of people out there who kind of rep skateboarding style but aren't necessarily skaters is there like mm. are you guys okay with that like does it feel like a little like stolen valor like you know a lot of people are out here dressing like skaters who don't really skate and i'm just curious as to you know like legends of skateboarding yourselves like does that ever rub you the wrong way or what what's up what's the feeling not at all yeah you're cool with it hey, everybody gonna dress how they gonna dress uh, yeah oh my to, to say is there anything, anything like is there any is there is there any skate like deck or any skate like shoe that like only skaters should wear like is there like just a is there like an off limits thing well obviously it's really sad when you see all your homies upset about not being able to have access to dunks and uh, like yes. skate it and then i have a moment where i'm like damn i really do be feeling some type of way for my homies that are sad that they can't skate <laughs> these shoes anymore so no. yeah that's kind of sad for a moment, but then I'm like, too bad. It'd be like that. <laughs> yeah, I guess I never really thought about it. Like, I'm wearing dunks right now. Yeah, Give like, them to a skater, take them off. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> take them off? <laughs> take those SBs off. I can't. They're the off-whites. Off I can't do it. I can't do it. Uh, but like, I never thought about it like that before because it's like, I think, because like, I, I hoop. I like to, I used to play basketball on the weekends and, and stuff on the side. Like I really love to hoop in a pair of Kobe Elevens, but now they're they're impossible to get. 
Um, like that was always the shoe I played in. Yeah. And I never thought about it in the sense of like for skaters as well. Like you got a shoe you like to wear when you skate. Like there's got to be a thing that's the most comfortable on your feet when you're doing this this very difficult thing. Uh, so for y'all, what shoe is that? What, what do you prefer to skate in? Oh, good question. Because it, I don't know, it varies. I switch it up, honestly, from dunks to to Jordans to sh- cup sole, vulcanized. Yeah. Like, I just change it up, honestly. It's however I'm feeling. Mine are Jordan 1s. Mom. I just yeah. feel like they're broken in immediately and they just feel really nice and soft. I Out really want to skate um, dunks, but... It's so hard from the beginning. I'm like, damn, I really have to put in work right away to break these in. I don't want to work that hard. Yeah. For shoes. It seems like all these great basketball shoes are also just great skate shoes. It's like they just get repurposed. It's like either it's Jordans or it's, you know, Dunks, originally a basketball shoe. There's there's obviously just something. There's like a crossover there. I don't know if it's like something physical in the way the two sports are played. But uh, but I always found that really fascinating. It happened because it was a cheap shoe. Yeah, the Jordan that too. one, and they're just like, "Well, I'm just ripping my stuff up. Let's go." Yep, and cheap, and cheap. the dunks were too, right? I mean, mm-hmm. durable, yeah. but also pretty cheap. So for y'all, as we project here to the future of skateboarding, what do you guys envision? What do you see? What are the trends? What's going to be new and hot in skating that we don't know about that y'all are already doing because you're so fashion forward. And just for the sport in in general, it's a, it's a sport that seems to to be growing at a rapid pace, especially now being included in the Olympics and things of that nature. Uh, where do y'all see where do y'all see the future of skateboarding? I think everyone's just going to be a lot more authentic to themselves. Like people yeah. aren't like uh, like attached to a certain type of look or looking to a certain type of way. Like a lot of skaters before, they're like, okay, this is what my sponsor sent me. Like this is how I'm going to wear it. People are just a lot more open to looking however they want to look, and yeah, that's just like themselves. what's going to happen for sure. Like when I first started skating too, let's say like Bones would send me a box and like, all right, I'm gonna wear my Bone shirt, like because this is what everyone else is wearing. I'm like, girl, yeah. what do you? doing just like go back to yourself and everyone's just been so fresh lately and people are like oh people are trying hard i'm like nah people are actually just dressing how they've been wanting to dress and they're not scared no more yeah what about uh like i know robert i've heard you talk about your like skate style like your has 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 evolved over the years like do you find that like your personal style like also kind of like evolves with the style of of how you skate uh yeah i feel like that for uh i feel like that for everybody yeah. It's the same thing for everyone. But over time, everyone, if you if you keep doing what you're doing, you're gonna get better. You're gonna evolve at what you're doing, no matter whether it's skateboarding or soccer or whatever. Like you're gonna evolve in whatever you're doing. Yeah. So Brianna, do you feel like that like that you're like personally like your style has even like kind of evolved with with like your skate style? I think my my style is going backwards. I'm like going back <laughs> to where I was before. Not like yeah. looking crappy, but like I feel like it doesn't evolve. I'm just like a, a circle of myself. I'm just like, wee, 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 but I'm going faster. I don't know yeah. if that makes sense, but. Back to the beginning. Yeah, back to the beginning. Cause that's where I was the most swag in the beginning. And then I got lost. And then I'm yeah. back at the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> that was trying to yeah, find that. it with skateboarding. Like, ah. No, that's real. Like we talked about that in the first episode. It's like that those early styles are like so formative. I feel like there's like a time you kind of move away from it, almost like, you know, like a like an instinctual like childhood rebellion. And then you like as you grow up, you're like, oh shit, like I'm gonna straighten my hair again. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna get bangs again. I'm gonna be emo. (laughs) Oh, (laughs) emo. (laughs) Scene kid again. (laughs) Yes. Yes. I'm gonna just go bald on you. (laughs) Change it up. My my look early on back in the day when I figured out like you know a fashion sense was uh, me and my brother went to the Georgia the Norcross swap meet and we got all fatigues because we wanted to dress like uh, Master P <laughs> um, because that was a big thing back then so I'll say hopefully my style does not go in a big ass baggy oh, shirt yeah hopefully mine is going as far away from my Master P moment <laughs> to sprinting in the other direction um, is there any just, uh, just kind of wrapping up I just wanted to know this out of curiosity like is there any cities in particular you love to skate more than others? Any any parks, any spots? And what is the the thing about this place or these places that, that make you love them so much? Denver. 
I love D Park and I love everything around Denver. And I just hold a special place in my heart. When I first started skating, I was going on trips with Element. So I went on a trip with um, just the Element team and just like chilled in a van for so long and just went to a bunch of spots. And I just love Denver. You can have all of the like weather and you just like drive a few hours, like hot, cold, freaking snowy now. And I don't know, Denver is just fire and I love it so much. And I can't wait to go back and skate there. And I'll probably just do it like tomorrow. Denver slept on. I think a place that stand, stands out to me, I say is New York. I got friends out there that really keep me uh, motivated, even outside, on and off the board. So I say New York. Yeah, best city to skate in New York. I love New York. That's the reason why I started skating. Yeah. Like New York is fire. I love New York. Yeah, the I mean the last thing we've been asking everyone this, but like what's what are some tra- what are some brands you're seeing like for 2022? What are some brands you're planning to rock that you just think are like about to blow up? Mm. Jordan, Nike, StockX. <laughs> 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 but straight up, we got like Winks all the into most the fire into the camera. stuff. <laughs> <laughs> But I honestly, I've just been rocking with a bunch of kids on Instagram. They're just making a bunch of fire custom clothes. I'm like, oh, yeah, all yeah, right, yeah. this is For where sure. it's really at the customs with the love. But yeah, it's a lot of talent around the world. I I, I totally agree with that. I buy more. I buy more clothing off Instagram. Like at first, it was just kind of like this weird curated thing that I felt like attacked by in my in my ads. They'll be like, here's a Hawaiian shirt. You're talking about going on vacation here. And now it's like real people making real clothes yeah. in a way that's really, really dope. Uh, I actually got this hoodie is from a brand I, I found on Instagram called uh, Sticky Baby NYC. And they customize, they customize all their stuff. And it's all high quality and handmade. So I, I kind of, I'm with you on that. Like, yeah, there's I something have like special a- about that. I have a whole Instagram of just like separate things. So just small brands will pop up on my on my page. I'm just like, okay, I'm going to follow all these small brands and curate like a whole other Instagram so I can find these low key people. But that's my vibe for sure. Yeah. I'm already rocking like Jordans and everyone's be rocking Jordans. So I'm like, damn, I got to make my shit really special now. <laughs> <laughs> you do though. We all different. So we all going to make it special. All right, Robert, Brianna, y'all are dope. This was this was My amazing. Brother. I really appreciate y'all, y'all coming on here talking about your your life and skateboarding and fashion of it all and how you got into it. Um, it was it was amazing. Thank you all very much. Thank you for thank having you, us. Thank you, thank this you, thank you, thank you, guys. I really appreciate it. We are now digging into the price is hype with senior StockX economist Jesse Einhorn. This is a segment in which uh, Jesse tries to dunk on us, and we never, ever allow it. Ever. Ain't that right? Yeah, absolutely, that's right. Jesse, do you think you dunk on us? Yes I, or no? I mean, I've definitely tried. It's it's only been, like, two episodes as the third, so oh I, you know, I don't think we should, oh like, be judging my right, performance whatever, exclusively <laughs> on those first two. But, yeah, I mean, I'm I'm going to try again, and uh, I'll probably fail again. But that's what that's what it's it's just being an American is yeah. just trying and failing and then getting back up <laughs> Jesse, with, like nothing happened. Jesse, here's the thing. If we win today, me and Isaiah win this $10,000 in stock X credits <laughs> separately. <laughs> Those are the stakes. Agree, that was in the contract. Agree right now I, on, on Mike. <laughs> I, I have to check. I have to, you I don't have to, have to, have to check. check. Come on. You're senior. You're right. Senior <laughs> economist. There's don't a chief. Do there's a chief economist who just like, uh, you know, is like in like a special room oh that I never God. see. Kind of like, like you know, lie. Wizard of Oz style. Yeah, and he'll uh, dude, strike me down so if I bad. if I me give away too much stock X credit. But we'll see. We'll see. We're going to give out, I don't know, something. The credibility, the respect of your peers oh, uh, I, don't need that. That. Yeah. I don't need all that if you give us the stock x credits then we can buy the respect <laughs> of our peers with shoes what are you talking about <laughs> you, make, you make you make a fair point you make a fair point but but so guys i i you know we've been talking a little about skateboarding we already mentioned sb dunks which you know the first thing certainly i think of when i think of, of skateboarding and, and sort of stock x and current culture of sneakers and streetwear i think about sb dunks 
And I wanted to like play like a little, just come on to like do a little quiz, talk a little bit about like SB Dunks for the last couple of years. I don't know if you're, you're aware, but like, you know, SB Dunks had like a big moment last year. Yes. Um, it was like absolutely wild. We were looking at some of the data and like at the beginning of 2020, it was like the average SB Dunk on StockX was going for around like, you know, like 200, $220. By like August of that summer, it was up to like eight hundred dollars just for like the oh, average, oh my just for God. the average SB dunk. And that you know, then there were ones that were going for like thousands of dollars. Yeah. There were some like early sort of hints that it was blowing up, but like I was frankly pretty shocked that it that it blew up the way it did. I mean, we just never seen kind of like an entire silhouette like that, you know, just go up like three or four x in prices. Yeah, no, it, it definitely did. It was. Uh, it's weird because they became uncoppable like you could yeah. not get a right. pair yeah. yeah you couldn't get a pair you couldn't hit a pair on sneakers or like you know there are also you know another thing that's cool about the whole skate culture thing is like the little skate shops will have raffles impossible right impossible yeah yeah uh, yeah they they really blew up i mean yeah. you know not to not to get on you know economical again but it's like you know this this is the thing right it's like first of all dunks have like a really low retail price point right they're like a hundred hundred dollars right. they're not like jordan's so when you got a sneaker that's like it's it's going for a hundred dollars but it's worth like a thousand dollars people are going to try pretty hard to get that sneaker like they're going to yes. right. they're going to line up they're going to like right. you know do everything they can in all sorts of ways that they can to get their hands on that so it's like Part of that was just a function of supply and demand and just like, you know, the opportunity there for 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 sellers if they got their hands on this to flip and make like a really quick like nine hundred dollar profit. Yeah. Um, you know, it's hard. It's hard to kind of deny people that. <laughs> yeah. That uh, that impulse. But like, all right. Price is right. So you can't go over in the price is right. OK. I think rules. Right. You can't go. Right. over the price. Yeah, yeah. You have to kind of guess. It's but it can't be more. Closer, but it can't be yeah. Yeah. Over, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So. All right. Let's start out. Start out kind of a little lower on the list. Um, let's go with the Chunky Dunky Friends and Family Ben and Jerry's collab. Not the not the normal one. Yeah. There was a Friends and Family edition sold for pretty big price. What's the price? What's the max price? It came in say? the it came in the ice cream tub, right? Oh, yeah, it came in the ice cream right. tub. Exactly. Yeah. Um, this is like the highest sale. So because it's just like I want to know like what's the most people are willing to pay. I'm gonna say forty five hundred. Interesting. I'm gonna go because in my head, mine is literally exactly a thousand less. I'm gonna go thirty five hundred. Isaiah wins that one. It's fifty four hundred. Oh, so a little over five thousand people right. pay for that one. One to one for pretty, ten thousand dollars. Yeah, credits. that's for those keeping track at home. It's one for one, and the uh, <laughs> you know winner is ten thousand dollars. <laughs> um, all right. So moving up the list a little bit, the two thousand two Supreme Black Cement Dunk. This is so weird. Like Supreme heads are so weird to me of, of like how how they can spend their money. So I'm gonna say I'm weirdly gonna go a little bit. I'm gonna go like I'm gonna say seven thousand dollars. I'm gonna go with twenty three hundred. Wow, yeah, sir, big win oh. there, eight thousand six hundred dollars. So yeah. very very close. Yeah. Um, and just as a hint, we're gonna do an a, a ascending order of price, so each one will be more expensive than the last. Oh, that gotcha. that's just to give a little bit of, of guidance. But yes, that was a terrific guess. Uh, basically, like off by about a thousand dollars. So again, one step closer to ten thousand dollars in stock. <laughs> uh, all right, going up the list, the SB Dunk Freddy Krueger, very rare shoe. Yes, uh, let's say I'll let's say I go with this. Ten thousand, and I am gonna go. This sound crazy. I'm gonna go fifteen. Not that crazy. The high sale for that is thirty thousand dollars on StockX. Oh! That one went for thirty thousand dollars, which wow. is pretty insane. And they sold like more than like. There's been a few trades. It's not that rare. I, I, I mean, like they, sincerely, who is who has this amount of money? I mean, I'm genuinely. It's got to be asking. like PJ Tucker, you know? Yeah. <laughs> like it's got to be just some. Um, some super rich uh, as, super as we've established rich. in the first episode all kids are rich now yes yeah. that so is, that if, is true. if all kids are rich someone's gonna pay thirty thousand dollars all right let's do the final one this is the high sale this is the most expensive sneaker ever on StockX, um and it's the nike sb dunk low paris oh the paris is they go for i feel like they go for like fifty thousand. okay that's your guess yes I'll say fifty five thousand. <sighs> just went over just a little bit. Fifty one thousand nine hundred and fifty dollars. So about fifty two grand. Uh, so for those of you keeping track at home, I've lost track of the score, which means the ten thousand uh, dollars in stock X credit will revert to the producer. <laughs> so congratulations, Mike. Oh uh, man. So uh, very very exciting for you. Um, but yeah, fifty two thousand, which is pretty again. That's 
pretty wild. Cra- it, it, no one has that amount of money. I'm conv- like, yeah. Was it Rihanna? <laughs> Or did she get some Pumas? Who is she with? Puma? She's with Puma. Puma. Okay. I don't know if she's yeah, with Yeah, she's any- got to wear Puma. Yeah, I don't know if she's with anybody anymore, but. Wild. Yeah, yeah that's it's pretty wild. It's pretty wild. So yeah, that was the that was our that was our game for the day. You guys did great. Uh, very close guesses. I have to say these these prices are, you know, pretty insane. So the fact that you could guess within a couple thousand dollars is is impressive, although not $10,000 in stock. It's credit impressive. Um, oh. Oh. <laughs> I was going to say, well, I spent so much time on StockX. I'm surprised I got any more. Yeah. Yeah. All right, y'all. It's time to wrap this thing up. Before we do, uh, first of all, we want to thank our guests, Steve Bear, Robert Neal, and Brianna King. Of course, senior StockX economist, uh, our benefactor in StockX credits, Jesse Einhorn. Uh, the man. As a matter of fact, y'all just find him on Instagram, Twitter. He said he's willing to give money out to whoever. <laughs> um, just drop your Venmo Cash App in the comments, and yeah, he'll he'll hook you up. Uh, he'll just need your home address and your mother's maiden name, and he'll he'll send those credits right on over. Um, Zay, before we bounce, we're gonna do a little heat forecast, if you will. Um, more just fantasy heat. Heat you want. Heat you want on your feet, right? Okay. Um. What would be like if you had like a fantasy dunk collab? What would what would yours be? Oh man, that's tough. I will say I would I would be really interested to see what Kith would do with a dunk. They have amazing Air Force Ones for all their stores that open. Yeah. Um Paris, Tokyo, Hawaii. I think they would they could do something really cool. I just really like the aesthetic of that company. Yeah. Um, I think that would be a great collab. I also think as weird as this sounds, I also think that uh, just personally being somebody from Atlanta, I would also want to see like a Waffle House or something like that, like a Buddy. Waffle House dunk. Buddy, you know I love that. <laughs> you know I love that. I love that more than the hash browns that are smothered and covered. covered. <laughs> Cover, it's mother covered and chopped. <laughs> I like mine capped. That which one is that? Mushrooms. Mushrooms. Oh, buddy, <laughs> cheese and ham. That's all I like. So it's what is that? Smothered and chunked. Smothered and chunked. Yeah. Smothered. Uh, I usually just go classic smothered, but every once in a while, I, I like it a little capped. Yeah, man. I, I gotta say that you are disgusting. Um, just I just gotta say that real quick. You are disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, you know Capped. what? Nah, oh, come on, man. I, I here's one thing about mushrooms: they look like and feel like they're alive. Like I feel like anytime Fair. you see a mushroom, it's always like twirling and like it's like <laughs> ooh, like it's always like moving like a snake. And you're like, come on, man! It's got like a Tim Burton yeah, that's exactly veggie look. Right. Like that's what it, it looks like yeah. something growing in the garden of Edward Scissorhands. <laughs> That's exactly right. That's why I can't stand them. They always look like they're belly dancing. They're always just like, mm, are you going to eat me? Like, oh, man. No. Oh, uh, my uh, my fantasy collab. And uh, we talked about it already. I would have loved to have seen like a zero collab or like a toy machine dunk or, you know, like a zero dunk or like just one of the real old skate OG houses, skate company you know do something i mean it would be crazy to see like a tony hawk dunk that would be you dope. know what i mean like just like especially now i don't know you guys have been following him on instagram but he does this like one last time thing or he does a trick one last he and then he retires it because he's like i'm just getting too old um so it'd be cool to like end his career i think just like with one like definitive shoe for i mean like literally the man who brought it to everyone you know i think uh could be could be pretty cool um that and i'd love to see a huddle house dunk oh you want the huddle house you think i'm gross you think i'm disgusting (laughs) you're out here talking about huddle house which is you know we'd say superior you're like I'm kidding, you're I'm like catching me in North Florida kind of a vibe right now. That's what that's what you're on Bro, right. Bro, you're now. out here eating dancing mushrooms, man. <laughs> How dare you? All right, y'all. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of uh, History of Heat. We want to thank our guests Steve Bear, Brianna King, Robert Neal uh, again. And I don't want to say 
that if you can find his home address online, you can show up at his house and he'll hand you a certificate for $10,000 worth of StockX credits. But senior StockX <laughs> economist, Jesse Einhorn, I'd like to thank my host. What's your name? My name's Isaiah. I'm your brother. You're my host. <laughs> You're my host first. My friend second, my brother third. Brother third. Okay, brother's brother third is not bad. Not for that. You it's know, not bad. That sounds like a. It sounds like a weird religion in the future. It's like I am brother. Third. I'm brother third. <laughs> Eat this mushroom. <laughs> so and I'm Yasser Lester. We'll catch y'all next time on History of Heat. I hope we're recording this because this is like some in real time. Yeah. <laughs> you want to say what's going on? Uh, yeah, I, there was a shock drop of the Supreme um, Air Force One flax on their, yep. on their website that I missed because I have to do this as my job. <laughs> yeah, I like, for the record, I like looked over at Isaiah and there was like this, this, yeah, like, this dread. S- sadness washed it's over. over his face. It's, it's 1102. It's over. It's gone. Yeah. yeah, it's gone. It's been two minutes and yeah. that's too, way too long in the life of a Supreme drop. <laughs> That was an emotional moment. Yeah. I, I saw I saw your soul leave your body. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's not it's not a great feeling. That was a Hidgum original.